In the previous exercises, the focus was on developing the skills of assertiveness so that you can express yourself more clearly and effectively. In this exercise, the focus will be on the other person. We are going to work on the skills of listening and validation. This is important because assertive communication is about validating the other person's needs, opinions, and emotions, as well as ours. We are going to look at three steps. Asking questions and reflective listening, body language and identifying with the other person, and acceptance and encouraging participation. Let's start. Listening and validation. Step one, asking questions and reflective listening. When you are communicating with somebody, in order for them to feel validated, it's very useful to ask them questions and demonstrate that you are valuing their experience. Try to be curious, open, and interested in what they are saying. Be mindful of yourself and present in the situation. You can use statements such as, I understand that. I can hear that you feel. I get what you are telling me. I understand how you feel. These are meant to show the other person that you are reflecting on what they are saying and that they are being truly heard. Think about a conversation that you had recently with someone important to you. What about their experience would you ask them? Then, how would you use the statements in order to practice reflective listening? Think about it for a while and write your answers in the worksheet. Example, asking questions. What happened last night? I noticed that you were worried. Then what happened? How did you feel when they told you the news? Reflective listening. You must have been very concerned about that. It sounds like you are still thinking about it. Now pause the video and do the exercise. Great job. Step two, body language and identifying with the other person. Often, the body language that the other person has can tell us a lot about how they are feeling and about their attitude on the subject. Sometimes the body language coincides with the content that they are communicating, but other times not so much. Think of the example from the previous step. Try to remember whether you observed something significant about the body language and posture of the other person. Did you have the impression that they were more open or closed based on their body language? Write your answers down in the worksheet. Next, Try to think about whether at some point in your life you've had a similar experience as what they are expressing to you. It doesn't have to be completely the same. Maybe you will recognize certain aspects of the story that remind you to something similar that you experienced in the past. You can share these aspects so that the other person feels more connected and understood. Note that sharing your experiences shouldn't divert the conversation exclusively to you. This is meant to be a supportive and validating activity. Now, pause the video, take your time, and think about the body language and identifying with the person that you talked to recently. Write your answers in the worksheet. That's great. Step three, acceptance and encouraging participation. In some situations, the conversations that we have with people may not be about something that we are particularly familiar with. Also, there are cases where we may not agree with the person's point of view and we might have a hard time accepting the thing that they are sharing. In this case, it is important to try to practice accepting what they are saying, their emotions, opinions, and needs. All of us are different and go through different psychological processes. So with this skill, we can practice accepting their view and being non-judgmental. Think about a recent conversation where you had trouble accepting what the other person was conveying to you. Try to remember how accepting you were. In what way could you practice being more non-judgmental? Think about it and write the answers in the worksheet. You can also be aware of this skill and try it out next time you are communicating with someone. The last thing that we are going to talk about in this exercise is encouraging participation. In some cases, you or the other person may feel a little disconnected, distant, or you may have a conflict with the other person. It is normal if this happens from time to time, 
which is why you can try to encourage continuing with the communication. Next time, when you are having an important conversation with a significant person, try encouraging participation if you feel like you've hit a barrier in the communication. Write your answers in the worksheet. Good job, everyone. This was the exercise, listening and validation. See you in the next video.